Welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Jenny and I'm here to discuss bookish things with you. I'm still catching up for the year so today we're going to do my March reading wrap. In March I read eight books returning to a little bit more of a uh, normal pace after reading 17 in February. But uh, since I didn't get to spend two weeks floating around the ocean that kind of makes sense. I also started a new job in March, so I was pretty mentally taxed. In February, I did discover a new author, Frieda McFadden, so it makes sense that my first read in March was from her with Never Lie. This follows a newlywed couple who are out house hunting during a blizzard. Sure. So they go to visit a house that looks too good to be true and they end up trapped there due to some pretty dicey winter weather. The house is too remote to get a cell service, and there's just no chance of them safely walking anywhere for help. So they're trapped in this house. What could go wrong? So McFadden is now second to me, only to my beloved Alice Feeney. This was a good one too. So this was a fun, twisty, unexpected read. So four stars. All right, next up was Beastly Bones by William Ritter. This is set in 1892, and it's book two of Ritter's Jacoby series. So R.F. Jacoby is the main dude, and he is something of a Sherlock Holmes character, but in more of a paranormal setting. So werewolves, dragons, ghosts, trolls, and the like are Jacoby's subjects. I read book one of this series probably about a year or so ago, and although I'm not generally into the paranormal, I did enjoy the book. Jacoby's assistant, the Dr. Watts-esque character, is a young lady named Abigail who is determined to make it on her own outside the shadow of her famous father. But seeing as how I did enjoy book one, I was looking forward to this one as well. But this one had some of the hang-ups that remind me of why I'm just not normally into the paranormal. Mainly I just didn't buy it. In a lot of these types of stories, you have to take such a leap into the bizarre that ultimately the story becomes stupid. This one ended up a three star for me and I don't feel too motivated to keep going with this series. One redeeming factor, the books are pretty short. So, all right, Freedom McFadden, take two. This one is called The Locked Door. This one follows a surgeon named Nora, who is the daughter of a, of a notorious serial killer. I used to watch this show called Evil Lives Here, um, which is about the lives of family members of convicted killers. I'm always kind of shocked how many people believe that this type of evil runs in families. And if your parent or a sibling is a killer, that you were either complicit or are probably secretly a killer too. Anyway... This book really kind of plays into that mentality. So Nora, our lead character, became a doctor and has now spent her entire life trying to save lives in part to atone for her father's sins and also to set herself as far away as possible from him. But uh, then uh, Nora's patients start dying too from brutal murders. So uh, is Nora following in his footsteps? I'll be honest, this wasn't my favorite of McFadden's books. I'm not saying it's not worth the read, but maybe I wouldn't start with this one. Three stars. Okay, so I have this thing where when I find an author I really like, I tend to binge their books. So next up is another book by Frieda McFadden. This one's called The Wife Upstairs. When I first read this book, I was actually a little disappointed in it because it reminded me too much of Colleen Hoover's Verity. I thought... She ripped this off. Then I found out that this book actually came out first. So now I think Coho ripped off Frida. But anyway, I did like both books. They're just very similar. So I also think McFadden's favorite book growing up had to have been Jane Eyre. Read some of her books and let me know what you think. But I digress. All right, anyway, this book is about a woman named Victoria, equivalent to Verity, who on the surface has it all. She's got the big fancy house, a loving husband, children, solid career. But then she suffers a terrible accident and is now wheelchair bound and kind of mentally not all there. Her husband is determined to care for her at home, so he hires a live-in caretaker named Sylvia. 
Upon her arrival, Victoria manages to secretly let Sylvia know that about a diary that she had hidden in a drawer that she kept from before her accident. As Sylvia starts to read the diary, what does she believe? Does she trust the apparently devoted husband who has given up everything to care for his invalid wife? Or does she trust the diary? This is twisty and will probably leave you saying, what the fork? But if you've read the arguably more popular Verity, it's a little tough to follow that up. Okay, one more Freedom McFadden. All right, this one is called The Inmate. This is a story of a woman named Brooke who has recently returned to her hometown after her parents died and she inherited her childhood home. The only job she's able to find is as a nurse practitioner at a men's maximum security prison. The problem? Her high school sweetheart, Shane, is an inmate at the prison. And uh, it's Brooke's testimony that put him there. Now that she's face-to-face -face with him again, her memory is challenged about the event that put Shane in prison. Was her testimony accurate? Is Shane the murderer that she claims he is? This was a really good twisty thriller, and I honestly did not know who to believe until the bitter end. Read this one. Okay, on to my next read. If you've been following me for a while, you have probably never heard me give one star to a book, but I did for this one. In fact, the only reason I even made it through this book is that it is thankfully really short. Sally Rooney's Normal People. I think this is a book people either give one star or five stars. You either really relate to these monstrous characters or you don't. Thankfully, I don't relate to these people. <laughs> so I originally picked this book up because I saw it was being made into a TV series. I can't remember now what service or channel or whatever. And uh, I definitely won't be watching it. So I'm not looking. Anyway, this book is set in Ireland, which I get a kick out of, um, and it follows two lead characters, Connell and Marianne. They start a clandestine love affair in high school where Marianne is from a very wealthy family, but she's a very troubled girl, and Connell is poor, but he's handsome and popular. They keep their relationship a secret because of Marianne's social status or lack thereof, which uh, I automatically find repugnant. So they end up going to university together in Dublin where Marianne now seems to be the popular girl, but Marianne doesn't really know how to handle her popularity. She, she seems to be game to do literally anything to maintain her relationships with her boyfriends. There was nothing redemptive about this story to me. I disliked Marianne, I disliked Connell, and I really disliked all of their shallow friends. Run screaming from this inexplicably popular book. One star. Okay, next up, a little fluffier, is the first book in the Dreamland Billionaires tr Trilogy. This is The Frying Print by Lauren Asher. This was recommended to me by one of my friends who is a staunch romance reader. Her name is Tia. Um, so what is Dreamland? Dreamland is basically Disney. It's theme parks, movies, their own cable channel, merchandise, a cult following, the works. The trilogy surrounds three brothers, each book about one of the brothers who are the heirs of the Dreamland company and fortune, but their grandfather who left this to them, um, left them with some conditions. They each have to meet a certain condition in order to uh, get their inheritance. So book one follows the oldest brother, Rowan, who just wants to go sit in his office in Chicago and be CFO and be left alone. But then he meets Zara. Zara works for the company and her dream is to be a designer, namely designing attractions, rides, etc., for the park. So she comes up with a brilliant idea that is going to help Rowan meet his task, the, the thing that he has to do to earn his inheritance. So this book is a romance, so you can probably guess where this is going. So after a bunch of twisty thrillers from Frieda McFadden, this book was, uh, it was much more relaxed and fluffy. So it's a sweet story with a sweet backdrop. Um, I originally rated this as three stars, but the more I think about it, the more I really did like it. Um, and in fact, I'm in the middle of book two right now. So um, if you want something fluffy with the magic of a Disney-esque 
backdrop, then uh, this is probably the trilogy for you. Okay, so we're up to my final read. My final read for March was another fluffy romance called The Hating Game by Sally Thorne. So I'm going to start by saying that I kind of think that the premise of this book is a little bit stupid. So this is set in a publishing house that is the result of two separate publishing houses recently merging into one publishing house. So publishing house number one is all about the art of literature. Everything is colorful and romanticized. Um, the CEO's admin is named Lucy. She is warm and friendly and perky, colorful clothing. Um, CEO uh, admin number two is a guy named Joshua. He is cold and sterile. Everything's about the bottom line. It's all about how much money that they can make from the book business. So Lucy and Joshua, they hate each other. So they go out of their way to make each, each other's lives um, and days miserable. So HR is just a phone call away to deal with their general daily shenanigans. Everything is a competition between them. Now a new position has opened up at the merged company and they both want it. So will they do anything to get this? Again, this is a romance, so you can probably guess how this turns out. Um, while I don't really go in for the premise, it's, it's hard for me to imagine hating someone so much without a very good reason, um, or doing any of these things that they do to try and hurt someone else. Uh, it all overall did end up being pretty cute. I liked Lucy, I liked Joshua, and I was happy with how the book ended. Uh, there's also a movie that I did watch and it was complete trash. So read the book and embrace the fluff. Whew. Okay, there we go. That's it for March. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these and if so, what you thought. Thanks for hanging out with me today. Um, and if you made it this far, please remember to like and subscribe. Until next time, as always, have fun, be safe, and don't murder anyone. All right, bye.